Good morning, YouTubers, taxpayers, and fellow disciples. This is Oilfield Disciple. We are cruising with Jesus this morning at a balmy 19 degrees. Um, I just wanted to get on here right quick and explain uh, first truths and what I mean by that. And to clarify that, if, if anybody's like, what is the first truth? What do you mean by that? I'm not sure I've explained that um, fully. So I'm going to hit on that real quick. Um, yesterday I made that video on 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And in the beginning of the video said I'd go into 11. Um, I will make a video on that. Um, and I may hit on that a little bit in this video. But I'm going to um, in depth explain what I mean by first truths. When I'm talking about the three battlefields. The battle that I um, I feel led to, to, to fight. Uh, for God's kingdom that he has sent me out on this mission to do and that being a marriage and these first truths and of course abortion marriage the family home the biblical example of what a family should look like and these first truths and traditions that have been um, corrupting God's children since the beginning um, like Solomon says nothing new under the sun we see that we may we we give the Pharisees a bad rap when we come down on them, but yet we are no different in our churches today. Churchianity, religiosity, that I call it. So let's talk about this first truth right quick. I'm gonna flip your camera, flip the camera around. We're gonna keep cruising with Jesus because um, I got a lot to do today. Um, so y'all be blessed, be encouraged, and of course be frustrated by what I say. Go look it up for yourself. Do your own due diligence everything that I say don't just take my word for it so let's roll with Jesus cruising with Jesus all right um, first truce what I mean by that when I when I began going to church and and evaluating others lives as they proclaim to be lovers of God <laughs> and seeing the operations there Nothing seemed to be lining up with what I began reading in the Word. But, of course, I was new, so I didn't really know. Um, I have an earlier video um, on my testimony of how I came, how Christ came into my life and rearranged what I thought I was going to be doing the rest of my life. Um, so that is in an earlier video. I'm not going to get carried away in that. But I began evaluating, you know, God's Word. I ain't trying to play games here. I don't have time for it. Never have been a game player. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy that pretty much, if I tell you I'll do it, I'll do it. If I tell you I won't, I'm not. You're not going to change my mind on it. Uh, so when I began diligently studying God's Word, and really in the last two years, it's become more and more apparent and frustrating to me that the ones that have been raised up in the church have latched on to their what they were taught as youngsters growing up that's what i mean by first truths what grand, what my dad what my grandpa instilled in me as values their values those were my first truths fortunately i didn't grow up in the church I didn't have all these fallacies to get around and to lay down before I could latch on to the true tr to the one truth. <laughs> there's only one truth. There's only one way. So why do we have 40,000 different denominations in Christianity, um, an Islamic religion that is the second to Christianity, if there's only one God? Now I get it. When I read the Bible and you read the Bible, according to our circumstances and our emotions in our life, we're going to read a little bit different out of that to apply to our life. But at the end of the day, it's still going to have the same basic foundational truth to it. It's not going to change enough that I'm going to have a whole nother set of who, another set of ideas who God is. When I go to a funeral and I hear, um, you know, Joe passed and Joe's in a better place now no more suffering for Joe 
and he's an angel watching over us and yeah on and on and on fallacy after fallacy i'm like did you know joe i did joe was all right feller according to our worldly standards but joe hated god joe did not want nothing to do with anything i said about god why would that put him in a better place and no more suffering because the scriptures say he's going to outer darkness to suffer eternally i don't know that's just what the scriptures say i don't understand why we've we've compromised that one that's one first truth you know how many of us are taught grandma's up there watching over us Grandma's in the ground just like all the rest of us till Jesus comes back. Sorry, it's truth. You know, I'm not trying to be insensitive, but I don't have time to play games. We will compromise truth for comfort, emotion, and financial gain. Agenda. Personal agenda. And then the various minor ones, but those are the big ones that cause us to compromise truth. I don't want no one to spare my feelings and lie to me about something just to spare my feelings. If I am fixing to get my hand smashed, I'd really appreciate if somebody would say, hey, your hand being right there, you're probably going to get smashed off. Not, you know, hey, um, you might be strong enough. You know what? It probably would never happen to you. You're fine. Just stay where you're at. Oh, okay. And then my hand gets smashed off. I'm like, where was you at on that one? I thought you were my, my leader. I didn't know that come down and smash together every two minutes. You didn't tell me that? Well, I just didn't want to hurt your feelings. Well, thanks. Now my hand smashed off. Appreciate it, dude. Thanks for being honest with me. That ain't no different than what we do in our religion, in, in this religious um, cycle we have today. <laughs> We'd be lying to people, telling them all these truths to, to, to save their feelings. Or maybe it's the fact is you're just a plain ass coward that don't have the guts to stand up for what you probably don't really believe in the first place. Maybe, huh? I mean, let's, let's be honest. Because if I truly believe something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand by it. I'm not going to waver from it. But if I ain't sure myself, I'm not going to fight the cause. So, I mean, if you want to be brutally honest, just get down to it. Um, like I said, I don't have time to play games. I don't have time for this compromise, this teddy bear Jesus prosperity gospel junk. I'm tired of hearing pastors say, come to Jesus and your life will be so much better. Yes, it will. But not in the way you're explaining it there, you wicked deceiver. Because, yes, the scriptures do say um, that Jesus will give you life and life abundantly. But that ain't the life and life abundantly that we portray it to be in the flesh here on this earth. We got it made out. If you do everything right and you got all these check mark boxes, you should start to see an increase in your bank account. You know, the, the value of your vehicle ought to go up. Um, what you drive, you know, how big your house is, yada yada, so on and so forth. That's what these wicked, deceiving pastors um, mean by that when they tell you that Jesus will give you a life and life abundantly. Now, the life and life abundant that Jesus tells you about is the eternity and glory with Him. Not about here. About here is one thing and one thing only, and that's glorifying God and telling everyone you can about who the real God is and not the one you would like him to be. Take him out of the box that you put him in. I don't think he likes it there. But, of course, what you've got in the box ain't him anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, just looking at, just from my own life, as I become, as I started following Christ diligently, he, he is constantly saying, okay, now that I've showed you that, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need that from, from you too. I, I want to replace it, but I, I'm going to need you to give me that. Yeah, but I don't want to. I like that. Yeah, but that's not beneficial to the kingdom. It doesn't make you look more like me. 
it makes me look more like you and that ain't the way it works yeah and now is it i mean is that the way it works is that what the scriptures say i need my son to look more like you or am i supposed to look more like the son because of the word changing me from the inside out changing my desires the scripture it says pray for anything you ask and it shall be given you is not is not giving you daddy's credit card to go on spending spree well god i need this 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 and this. no when you start to have a heart for god you begin praying as god would have you pray being when i ask that so and so be relieved of this ailment or that this person would would find christ and christ would knock their door down too those are the requests that are being spoken of because i don't have no no longer do i have the desire to have the the toys of this life so therefore my prayers line up with what god's will and word says rather than my fleshful lust says and so it makes it real easy the word has to change us. Trials bring fire. Fire brings purging. Purging brings refining and perfection. Got to have it. It's a process. Got to go through it. You know, nobody wants to go through the fire. Nobody wants trials and tribulations. Christ didn't say you might have trials. Christ said you will have trials. We don't believe anything Jesus says except for the parts that we like. And and we twist those so it ain't really what he said anyway and so now we got 40,000 denominations and a whole world going I want no part of that absolutely not neither did I I still don't you got me messed up with somebody else I don't want your teddy bear Jesus I do however want the Jesus that died on the cross and suffered and paid the ultimate price to receive me back unto himself that's the jesus i want that's the jesus i seek for day in and day out trip stumbling and falling along the way learning repenting repeat the process you know i'm i i feel fortunate that god knew how hard-headed i was and placed hard men around me that were even more hard-headed but even going just as hard for their for the kingdom and wasn't afraid to tell me that's wrong are you stupid or dense hmm? pretty much both what do you mean go read it oh now i go read it and i'm like man how come i believe that oh that's right that's what that one wicked deceiving pastor said that time and i actually i actually heard it that's where we find ourselves in a bind will latch on to someone because they sound good, look good, feel good, taste good, touch good, whatever. And it lines up with my lust. So I'm going to roll with it. To heck with what the Bible says. You know, it's outdated anyway, right? It's for the Jews. Well, we don't even know what we mean when we say it's for the Jews. We don't have a clue on that. That'll be another video as well. Um... So that is what I mean by first truths. We got to knock down those barriers of tradition to get back to God's truth. Then we can see a transformation in our life. I'm reading 2 Corinthians a while ago, chapter 11. At the end of chapter 11, Paul's like, Y'all make me out to be a fool? Really? I mean... You like my letters. You didn't really care for me in person. You said I was a little bit too weak. You didn't sound nothing like my letters. You didn't really like what I had to say. And I see you're not doing what I what I said even in my letters. But that's fine. Y'all think of me however you want. I got a mission to do. Do y'all not realize all the things I've suffered for Christ's sake? Not for Christ, but because of Christ. You think I'm doing that because I like it? Y'all better get right. Because I'm finna come back for the third time, visit you again, and if you're still acting foolish, God will help you.
I can feel Paul's frustration there. He's like, God, I'm glad you ain't let me get back over there to them people because there wouldn't be one left standing. i take them all out. All these beatings I've been getting from these Romans and from these Pharisees, these wicked deceivers, I, I take it and I take it and I take it. Now I'm fixing to go back and give some myself. I feel Paul being that way. I mean, it's just my, my, my demeanor. Paul was once um, a guy that said to do something, didn't do it. He had to do killed. No questions asked. Paul was the man. He was Saul. Saul the man. And then comes to Christ, and Christ says, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of need some of that pride. I'm kind of need some of that um, anger. I'm pretty much going to need a whole lot of what you were so I can make you more like me. It's going to be a painful process, Saul, but in the end you'll be Paul, and you'll be my disciple, my apostle. That's what Christ does for each and every one of us. He says it to all of us. Some of us is willing to go through the process. Some of us ain't. Um, give me the choice not to go through the process I've been going through in five years and still get the same results. I'm on. I'm in it. I'm in it. But it can't work that way. It will not work that way. I have to go through a process of refining. And in, in that is the trials, the fire, and the purging of who I once was. You feel me? Does that, does that clarify anything for anybody? Does it make you get a little aggravated? I'm not giving that up. I don't care what the Bible says. I don't care what he says. He's wrong. That's up to you. I can be wrong today. I can be wrong tomorrow. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether I'm right or wrong. What matters is, is what you do, what that scripture tells you to do. Because you and you alone are going to stand at the judgment seat. I ain't going to be there with you. I've already got enough troubles of my own to deal with at the judgment seat. Now think about it. This is your life. And eternity is at stake. Eternity is for all of us. What side of eternity is the question. And that's the question that you must present to yourself. As you fall into and believe the traditions that you've been taught. Do they line up with God's word 100% or do they not? And if they do not, out. The measure of a prophet was he was never wrong, not even once. If he was wrong once, he wasn't a prophet of God, off with his head. Stone him, whatever. He dead, he's over. It's not a prophet of God. So if my beliefs are wrong in the scripture, in context, and the whole nature of God's plan, if my beliefs don't line up with that 100%, I'm wrong. Grandpa was wrong. I have, I am responsible for evaluating those scriptures and evaluating that fallacy and changing it in my life. It's your responsibility. Truth or tradition, it's up to you. Y'all have a blessed day. Uh, be encouraged. Be blessed, be fruitful, and of course, by all means, be frustrated. Do your own due diligence. It's the old field disciple. We will catch you on the next ride.